people love playing with me, but hate it. When I play back, what goes around comes around. minute to spare because it's so much I just want to get right into it. Hi everybody, how are you doing this morning on the West Coast and afternoon on the East Coast? Um this is so overwhelming and so much information coming in uh, at one time. I had to take yesterday off to gather all the information. Um, you've got the legal side, then you've got the rumors and gossip side. And it's just flooding in unbelievably quickly. So I know you guys probably know all of this. I just wanted to make sure that I explain to my people how this is a whole bunch of cases rolled up into one. Okay. So basically they're saying that P Diddy runs his business much similar to the mob. Okay. Where illegal actions happen, unethical things happen. So that's the premise. And the head of this gangster, I don't know what you call it, business will be P. Diddy, his son, Sean, uh, Justin Combs, and his uh, chief of staff, her, that's Christina. Let me see. I, they even have pictures. I'll bring those up in a minute. Um, let's go over why Ethiopia was dropped from the case. So now... Uh, people were saying that she's Diddy's ex chief of staff. No, no, no. She's a CEO, and I'll show you her picture in a moment. She's a CEO at Motown that goes under different umbrellas. I believe they're calling it UMG. UMG. And so, so it's three cases rolled into one. First case, they want to get them on ex trafficking with young children. That's that's one separate case. Another separate case is uh, transferring, deporting uh, controlled substances, okay? Because he was working with the dealer. Uh, he would have the dealer go over overseas, wherever he was. I believe the dealer's name was Brendan. And um, not just him, he had several he, he's the one that got arrested, but he has several. And one of the several ones was his chief of staff, uh, Christina. Christina is looking at jail time. So it's, it's Justin, Diddy, and Christina looking at jail time. Now, here is a copy of the them releasing uh, Ethiopia. They also released Shallot Records. Okay, so they have replaced in the new paperwork, I'm going to pull that up in a minute, Ethiopia with Cuba Gooding Jr. and Shallus Records, they just uh, dropped the case. Now, they're saying that since Diddy runs his organization like the mob, they blame the record companies for financing it because some of these freak offs went on in the studios, uh, all on Motown's dime. It is tricky. It seems crazy, but they're saying, you know that P. Diddy is crooked. I'm, I'm going to put it in layman's terms. You know he's crooked, and you decided to work with him anyway. So one of the people that worked with him anyway is Ethiopia, under the monocar, uh, UMG, or Motown Records. So 
uh, people are going around saying that, oh, she took a plea deal or she's going to testify against Diddy. The no, no, that's not what happened. What she said is, listen, yeah, I financed it. I physically gave him the checks or wired the money into his account, but I have a boss that okayed it. So therefore he's in charge and his name is Lucian Grange. So that's why they dismissed her because every time she wrote a check or paid anything for Diddy, she had to get approval for her, her boss. Now he found a whole bunch of paperwork today too. He's trying to get out of this. We'll get to that in a minute. So that's why they dropped uh, Utopia and she's not his ex chief of staff. That real chief of staff is Christina. Now let's bring up why they release Shallow Records. Shallow Records is, they said a uh, change of venue, but that's partial of the reason. Because when this pow pow went down, do you guys remember between Justin and Diddy in the bathroom? Let's see if I can pull that up. When the pow pow went down, uh, it wasn't in the New York offices. It was in the L.A. offices, okay? So with Utopia, they uh, dismissed her with prejudice, which means they cannot bring her back. They cannot retry this case. Shallus Records is without uh, prejudice, which means that they can go back after Shallus Records if they want to. Now, let me bring up the Shallus Records, which I find the most important. So everybody's running around talking about Carisha. Everybody's running around talking about uh, Daphne Joy. I mean, all that's good, too. But there's some more important things going on here. Um, at Shallus Records. Let me see if I can do this. Uh, they're saying that a pow pow went down in the bathroom between Diddy, Justin, and a man that they named G. Um, let me see if I can find the page number 29. Hold on, child. And when I tell you I have notebooks at this point, the paperwork is getting insane. 29, 29. There we go. All right. At Shallus Records, they're saying that a guy that they refer to as G got pow out in the bathroom. To make a long story short, Diddy came out and told everybody to say that he, the, the pow pow didn't take place in the bathroom. It took place around the corner and they have tons of evidence or not even evidence. They have Rodney saying that's not true because they can't get a witness to come forward that anybody that was there when they heard the pow pow. So at this point, it's only Rodney and maybe an anonymous person, but they don't want to come forward. Okay. But even worse than that is they can't find Mr. G. They don't know where he is. They don't know if he's missing or unalived. That's a lot of manpower to find one man. So they dropped the case, that part of the case, they dropped. They left a room open though, that because they dropped it uh, without uh, prejudice means they can go back and open it up again. Now, I'm sure you guys have heard this on other channels. I'm not going to go reading it again. Should I read it again, Perry? What all happened? Um, uh, no, no. I think you could just sum it up. Yep. Perry is gone. All right. He'll be back. Um, so that forced them to drop that part of the case. Um, there's a lot of speculation as to where in the hell is G. He is nowhere to be found. Now, I want to go back. So people are, are scared of Diddy because a lot of people become unalived or, you know what I mean, um, around him. So uh, they're physically scared of him, physically. I wanted to read this letter that Rodney wrote to the judge about how Diddy is harassing him. Let me see if I can find this letter. Hold on, guys. I don't know where Perry went. Okay, here it is. 
I wanted to read this letter. So basically, there's a couple things. P. Diddy wanted the other defendants to all use his attorney. Okay. Mm -mm -mm. We're not shine. We're not listening to that. He wanted they all to use his attorney, but they refused. That was Ethiopia. Uh, that was uh, the, uh, what's his name? Granger. He wanted everybody to use his attorney, which they refused to do. Also, uh, Ethiopia, the, the people at, at Motown stopped talking to him. They stopped speaking to him and responding to his attorneys. Now, I have to add this part in because it's very important. Yes, Diddy sold his shares in um, Revolt. So he wasn't broke. He still had money. But now they're saying he's back to billionaire status. Someone said to me, he didn't sell Revolt for a billion dollars. He had other money already. He is not broke. And he is known, and if you've been watching my videos, to pay people off, uh, threaten them, all of that. Anyway, I wanted to read this letter to the judge from Rodney. Oh, boy. Let me see if I can make that bigger. Now, if I'm going to start reading stuff, I'm going to have to get some damn glasses. So here's the judge. Okay, he says, I'm writing to provide your honor with an update regarding about ref, uh, reference matter on behalf of the plaintiff on March 21st, just a couple of days ago. Hold on. Hey, Perry. Hey, sorry about that. My internet, uh, my internet is tripping. The alarm just went off. Who's that? Uh, that's Damien downstairs. Okay. Okay. Um, so he wrote this letter to the judge. Um, it says plaintiff enter into an agreement with defendant Ethiopia under this agreement in exchange for a declaration that will be apprehended to the forthcoming amendment complaint. The plaintiff has agreed to dismiss claims against that's Ethiopia's last name. Don't get me to pronounce it because I can't. Furthermore, the plaintiff has elected to dismiss claims against Shallis Recording Studios. And I told you why they did that. They can't find the main witness uh, with prejudice means that they can bring if they find him. Then they can go back and reopen the case. This decision enables the plaintiff to refile these claims in Los Angeles, where uh, CRS is headquartered. These dismissals are made pursuant uh, F. RCP. Okay. Although we've been in constant contact with the writer, that's Rodney. Through threatening emails and letters, the remaining defendants have yet to appear in the case. Instead, defendant Sean Combs, through his representatives, has engaged in concerning behavior, including manufacturing stories to TMZ. They actually list TMZ and dispatching his agents to harass plaintiffs. Eight, this is Rodney's eight-year-old daughter, the mother of his child, and ex-spouses, all of whom have expressed fear of potential harm from defendant Combs. He's going around threatening people. And I, it's somewhere in here. Also, this was so bad. Oh, here it is, second page. Uh, he had to call the cops. These actions have compelled the plaintiff and his loved ones to file a police report. Okay, so they're saying he's harassing Rodney. He's harassing the other defendants. We don't know where G is. He's up to his old tricks. Now, a lot of people are scared of uh, Diddy. And I understand. He has a track record. You know, he just has a bad, he has a record of being violent. He has a record of beating people up. Remember Wendy Williams, uh, the, the football coach, the guy, the photographer that took the camera. Like, I did a video all the way down. So people are fearful. And I understand why. Yeah. Okay. 
a lot of people are going to have to eat crow. Gene, is that you? I, I, when I say it, when I say this case is far from over, I'll put it that way. This case is far from being a slam dunk. Okay. Now let's talk about these tapes that everybody's so fearful about. So according to the rumors, they took the system out of Diddy's homes, but they're having trouble getting into the system. Now, when I was out yesterday, I was talking to people. Is there a chance that the feds can break into the system? And even if they broke in, are the tapes still there? We don't know. But I'm being told that the more advanced your security systems are, the harder and harder it is to break into because it's based with a whole bunch of uh, what do you, passwords and codes and this and that. So, and I was going to play this yesterday. A lot of people are saying that those tapes still exist. And a lot of people, do I have this, are fearful that these tapes are going to come out. Now, we just, we don't have any tape. That tape that went around yesterday on social media with allegedly Diddy and Meek Mills, I don't believe that. It was very vulgar. Um, but just mentioning Meek Mill in the lawsuit has really ruined his reputation. And there's no tape. It's just his name being mentioned at being at one of the parties. Right. Can you imagine if you were on the tape? It can destroy you. Mm -hmm. Now, I know, I believe it was Gene Dill. I think it was Eugene that said that uh, Puffy had tried to unalive itself once before with the uh, corkscrew, but they went to the hospital and said that Kim did it. Anyway, uh, people are also saying like Epstein, uh, they feel something happened to Epstein. When it gets to the part of having these people being revealed, it's happened before in our history, whether it's the Heidi Fleiss case or Epstein. Uh, mysteriously, the list never comes to public. Y'all are messy. <laughs> <laughs> She's calling Meek Mill Freak Mill. That goes to show how damaging these tapes will be if somehow they come out. Now, I think there are no tapes. Uh, a lot of people do. One of the people is Perry. He believes that there are tapes. Let me see. Yeah, I think so. Find this. I wanted to play this little thing that's going around on TikTok. Hold on one second. My computer's lagging. Um, they're also saying that the reason that the buyer of Revolt, his shares in Revolt, is anonymous because they feel that it is somebody related to the tapes. They're saying that a lot of people behind the scenes are worried about these tapes coming out and trying to help him get off. Now, I don't know if that's going to work or not. Also, there's this rapper in England. His name is Giggs. Giggs. Um, they're saying that he supplied Puffy with the escort oh, prostitutes and, you know, mm -hmm. in England. So the party just didn't happen here in the United States in one of his seven homes and on his uh, flight and on his yacht. They also took place in England. Now, Giggs have said that that's not true, but they're saying that he's very, very fearful. So let me play this thing that I came across on TikTok that I found interesting. Find item that is allegedly about British rapper Giggs and Diddy and TD Jakes and how they are both afraid of Diddy. The British rapper slash supplier, Giggs, is still in contact with Mr. Freakoff, Sean Diddy Combs, which is why he was too afraid to denounce him by name in his bathrobe response. There is a reason they wore coordinated red outfits at the party in London. There is a reason why the owners of the restaurant slash club, which rhymes with quiche, don't want the world to see the security footage from the night of the party. 
There is a reason they shared the same dressing room. The British rapper will never call Freak Off out by name because of this reason. TD Jakes is afraid of him too. But people know. Just ask the owner of the club that rhymes with quiche or the chauffeur service they used to get to the club. They were shocked. Those closest to the televangelist warned him about being associated with Mr. Freak Off, but he did not listen. They're saying a lot of people are scared of these tapes coming out. Right. So you can't be swallowed up <laughs> on camera. <laughs> you know. <what> I'm <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um. So they they don't want these tapes to come out. So a lot of people are scared. So behind the scenes, he has a lot of support. Now get this. So Tyrese came out yesterday. That's explainable because you know. He be so high half of the time, allegedly. He don't know where he is. He's uh, in support of Diddy. Of course, we know Stevie J. Also, it's a lot going on. I can't, this is too much. I can't get it all together in one in one thing. Sherelle, I'm not Gene Dill. Oh, I'm just regular Gene. You're regular Gene? Okay, I thought you were Gene Dill. <laughs> all right, thank you, regular Gene. Um, what does I talk about? The tapes. They're scared of the tapes coming out. And people are saying that Epstein was off, uh, was unalived. Possibly. They're saying that people don't want these tapes to come out so bad. They wouldn't be shocked if Diddy came up unalived. That, this is deep, okay? Uh, but here's the thing: don't do it, and you don't have to worry about it. So they, uh, so they, they don't, they can't get into the system. And if they can. You say that the tapes are there? I'm pretty sure it's going to be some type of evidence. I mean, you know, something's going to be there. I believe when they took those computers, surveillance cameras and all that stuff, out of both mansions and stuff, something, they will find something. That's my belief. It's hard to tell. I mean, because no freak record a freaky movie not with the intentions to go back looking at it. And then a lot of people are saying this too, that Diddy had all these cameras in all his rooms. Yeah, I heard that. Mm -hmm. So when you having the freak off, and let's just say <laughs> TJ, I mean, the uh, well, no, I ain't going to use his name. TD Jakes, I, I don't want to say that. Somebody popular go in the room, whether it's a politician or whatever, getting a freak on. Mm -hmm. It's recorded. So if Diddy needs something from the church in Texas, mm -hmm. hey, by the way, you know I got this tape. If I need something from a politician, hey, you know what? Can you really? Yeah, you can definitely out? use them as blackmail. blackmail. But I don't yeah. know. I just think that uh, they no longer exist. All right. So let's go into the new paperwork that was filed, the new complaint now. All right, so we got rid of Ethiopia and we got rid of Shalis. Okay, so now they're saying that Diddy runs an illegal operation that's full, filled with bullying, uh, distribution of controlled substances, not paying people. And at the head of this ring is Diddy, his son Justice, and his chief of staff, Christina Corum. Okay, she stands. People are saying she tipped off the cops. No, 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 no. She's looking at a lengthy jail sentence. She was his number one right hand person. Here's a picture of her. I'll show you another picture I have of her before. Here she is. Um, I want to show you this picture before Diddy shut down his account. Hold on. Oh, I can't. Can't do that. Let me do this. Because, you know, they be taking things down, people. I believe she are, she closed down all of her social media, Christina did, and she because she knows she's in big trouble. Okay. She says here, oh, I can't see. Christina, a.k.a. KK. That's, this is who they're talking about. Okay. So they want Justin to do jail time, Diddy to do, do jail time, and Christina Corum. Uh, they call her KK in the paperwork. She says, uh, this is what Diddy says about Christina. This was a couple years ago. He said, Christina, a.k.a. KK, 
keeps everything in my life and business running. She's been my right hand for the last eight years um, and consistently proven to execute and get shit done. Don't know how I'd function without her. <laughs> He's saying she's heavily involved. Mm -hmm. And which means she knows a lot of the stuff that's going on. Uh, this is not a civil or state charge. The feds and Homeland Security would not get involved unless they have proof. I, I understand that. Has anyone thought why those two entities are involved? The civil case must have more. Well, listen, the tape that I put out today of WAC 100 talking to R. Kelly, of all people, WAC is going around saying that they're bluffing. They don't have all of this evidence that they say that they have. But this is the feds. And what were your thoughts on that, Perry? Well, no, I, I think, yeah, yeah, he was basically saying that it's not normal. They, you know, if they'd have had the proof. Well, was WAC actually saying that they went in because they wanted to get some more proof, like those tapes? The video mm -hmm. tapes? You, yeah, he's he's like you. They're gonna yeah. find the tapes. And, That's and then R. Kelly is more. Oh my God! Why is R. Kelly involved? I hope Byron said like you, but now he ain't like you. He's just saying you could tell him the sky blue. He wouldn't believe it because why believed... is R. Kelly giving his moral support to he, Diddy? You R. Kelly, you're... R. Kelly really believe that the freaky stuff he do should be legal. <laughs> no, you know what I'm saying. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right. Uh, okay, let's talk about Christina. Okay, child, Christina is a mess. Right, and she's almost like um, mean? what's that Fleiss lady or whatever? Like she's Heidi Fleiss. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. It's Basically. like her right hand man. Uh -huh. that would get and it and remember, she, I was telling you. Go ahead, Perry. She keep the drugs coming. The prostitutes she clothes. Mm -hmm. She keep all that coming. So of course, she's up there and. She's probably the one cutting all the checks and stuff, so it's not in Diddy's name. Because Diddy always distances himself mm -hmm. from all that. Mm -hmm. You write the check with your name on it, you know, stuff like that, just so he sort of feel like he protected. Go ahead. Okay, so they're saying that Christina is his right hand man. She orders the controlled substances. Okay, make sure that they get to wherever he is, whether it's overseas or in different states. Um, she also pays. The mule, this is why they interviewed the mule, through wire, I mean, uh, wire transfer money. That's why they're also included in this in new amendment, wire fraud. You're Because you're paying for illegal substances, okay? That's the wire fraud part. Uh, if you go down and read all of the stuff that she does for Diddy, she knows about him spiking his drinks in... Um, his cl nightclubs and at the party. So before you even get there, they're saying that they take the bottles, put substances in the bottles, and then you think they're opening a fresh bottle. And I actually seen a video. I should have recorded that of how they do it. Uh, oh, by the way, Diddy's not the only person uh, that's responsible for uh switching things in uh drinks they're saying sometimes when you go to the club um they put like more powerful stuff in the drinks some some of the clubs and seal it back up and you never know and i'm going to show that in my still video i'm going to put that video in um uh so she was in charge of getting the girls uh making sure that they stayed liquored up. Now, this is if this is an Elon Maxwell, then I don't know what is. And somehow the public thought that it was Ethiopia, the record exec. No, it was KK. That's what they call her. Um, uh, making sure that they're liquored up, making sure that uh, things were always the way that he wanted it done when it came to the freak, freak off. Mm -hmm. She also knows about she was responsible for telling some of the people to say that Diddy didn't pow pow, Mr. G. Um, she also was in on negotiating deals with uh, 
they're calling MUG. Now let me let me tell you how he plays into this. The executive of at of uh, Motown and a different number of umbrellas that he falls under. He, he's listed as. It seems like the feds are going down the road of Diddler Rico case. Maybe getting all the subordinates who were ordered to do the dirty work. Exactly. So, but this is this is what's different about him today. So, uh, she's saying. They're saying that there is evidence that Diddy has a history of being a shady character. And there was one case where he was uh, charged with two felonies. Do you guys remember the Steve Stout video I did for you guys? They list Steve Stout as an example that the music CEO was supposed to know that Diddy was dirty. Therefore, you went into an illegal business with him where he roughed people up, uh, had minor uh, prostitutes. And it's real important, these prostitutes, that the minors, because it's not illegal to have a freak off. That's not, you can sleep with as many prostitutes as you want, right? But the, they really focus it in on the minors. So, and they're saying that he supplied Diddy with the money. Now, on paper, this sounds ridiculous. To me, it does. But, Perry, you think it makes sense with the RICO charge? Because somebody got to be funding the money? Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, because it's like, it, it's almost, yeah, like with these RICO charges, I'm saying that it's not just one crime. Mm -hmm. It's multiple. Mm -hmm. He ran this crime organization mm -hmm. from drugs to hoes. To everything, you know, uh, people missing and, and yeah, physically right, harming right. people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just like the mom. Uh, Harold says they thought all the tapes that R. Kelly had made will never be found. Did they? What was the price? The right price? Ooh, they will be revealed. Harry thinks so, too. Anyway, so so today, uh, Lucian Grange, the CEO, has filed a motion to have the case dismissed. And his theory is. I did none of those things. I knew nothing about uh, the freak offs and I didn't supply Diddy with money so he could go and be cruel to other people, not pay people right, um, steal people out of their fair share of money. He has a whole list that he did with the money, D Diddy did. And just ask Mace. He was like, maybe to all of the artists too. Uh, that's what, uh, what's her name? Aubrey O'Day has been mentioning too about. So he's saying, I had no knowledge of any illegal activities going on. And not only that, by you putting my name in this lawsuit and people talking about me in the media, it has ruined my reputation. Now I talked to Perry about So that's what he filed today in the paperwork today. Perry, you think he has a point? Well, yeah. I mean, because anytime, like, let's just say you was a girl, for example, I'm just use this. And people called you a, a HO for years. Mm -hmm. Then they mm -hmm. come to find out, no, that was the wrong person. It really wasn't her. Mm -hmm. Most people don't go back to get the follow-up of the story. When they run across you, they look at you as an HO. And it, it can, you know, like if with Diddy right now, say if it come out in two weeks, all this was a lie. No nothing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Some people gonna still say, "Nah, mm -mm, you was at the freak off." Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You can never lose that image of that person in your mind. Tracy says, "Diddy's secrets are coming out." Stack Jones says they found a secret tunnel at the LA home. Here's the problem with the secret tunnel. We talked about this last time. Is that a lot of the homes in that neighborhood, Holmby Hills, have secret tunnels, including Hugh Hefner's home, uh, who I think in some weird way is Diddy's idol because <laughs> he's doing a lot of the same things that Hugh Hefner did. So um, it's not such a big deal at this point that they had underground tunnels because everybody has them. I believe it's Nicki Minaj lives in that neighborhood. Uh, and it's mostly uber rich, not just rich, uber rich people that live in Holmby Hills. So, um, but I will say this, I believe, well, I've been talking to people who believe that 
never mind. So anyway, so yeah, that that that's salacious to us. Why do they have uh, underground tunnels? I mean, that's crazy. That was my thought. And then it's a certain neighborhood. They said, like, oh, yeah, they, all these mansions have them. I mean, what all are they sharing? <laughs> you want to go to your house? Yeah. To his house? Like, <laughs> yeah. honey, where you going? I'm just going downstairs, not to the tunnel. Did you say you seen a picture of Hugh Hefner's tunnel? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you remember I, where you I, got it? Explain to me what oh. you saw. I can't remember where I got it, but uh, oh, it was uh, the girls that's going back right now talking about Hugh Hefner and oh, the, oh, the oh. stories of the mansion. Yeah, and yeah, stuff. yeah, yeah. So that's Heidi was, Madison's series. Go ahead. Yeah, all that stuff, and it's like underground. They got like swimming pools, just like a whole new area under there. And this was like a big parking lot, like out in front of Macy's, but it's covered. You know. Like a covered park underground, lot. yeah. Uh, and then these big tunnels, and they saying that they would get the the people who worked at the mansion to escort mm -hmm. them through. Because if you don't know where to go, you'll just be lost down there. Under to escort who through? Well, I'm thinking if you, I, I don't know. I guess like whether if you was into drugs, uh, if you was into underage oh. people that you didn't want the public to see. I mean, whatever it was, they was hiding. Oh. Oh, all right. We're just finding that out. There's an underground tunnel at Hugh Hefner is at Diddy's house, and you can bring in people un unnoticed. Right, That's right, exactly. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. So let's get back to uh Lucian's. He, Lucian, that's his name. Uh Grange. Uh so he's saying that uh you guys are messing up my reputation by these phony claims on the lawsuit. Now we want to know. Do you have evidence to support your claim? So uh, the the CEOs have to do it. Uh, Utopia had to do it because it does mess up your reputation. And in that business, you're only as good as your latest public media mm -hmm. writings are. Yeah. So uh, we got that. Also, we've got literally in the paperwork, it said that uh, KK was procuring, transporting, and distributing controlled substances. She also was in presence when they made the deal with uh, UMG. She's also the, uh, part of the wire fraud. Diddy never wired any money in his name to the mole or mule or the plug. I don't know what you call it the dealer, it was always her. So she's in deep, deep, deep trouble, okay? They also said that there's evidence to support that Justin brought in the prostitutes. Also, uh, he was wiring money. Now, to wire money in your child's name, shame on you, Diddy. Shame on you, but you have my, uh, managed to get the portion of the lawsuit that really would have been bad for Justin, and that is ha getting them to drop the whole um, Shelly's part of the lawsuit. Did he pissed off Diago? That's the liquor company. I don't know how to pronounce it. I used to live in San Diego, so I say Diego, and tried to sue them. Reminds me of the Bill Cosby takedown once he tried buying NBC. Someone bigger and meaner is behind this takedown. Okay, so you have a lot of black people coming forward today with different opinions. This all started yesterday on the internet. So Carisha is listed in the lawsuit, let me take this down, of being uh, one of the person that transported some of the drugs. Now, they're saying some people in the black community, not all, just some, they're saying, how come when Cassie admitted to the drugs, she was a victim? How come when Carisha gets uh, in the lawsuit for the drugs, now she's a conspirator? <laughs> like, people are starting to right. change their opinions. Mm -hmm. uh, they're also saying that None of this was a problem until Diddy sued the liquor company, Diego, which is in charge of De Leon. I think that's like some kind of brown wine and Syrah. They feel that they are behind exposing because they can't expose what you don't give them. 
And then when it all came out, they quietly negotiated a exit package for Diddy and he's no longer with their company. Will a company get that low to do that? I yeah, because they were going to mess up. He was saying that they were racist and that they didn't cater to the black market. And they knew that when Jay-Z came out publicly against Crystal, it ruined Crystal. They took a real financial hit because of it. So they thought that if Diddy came with this lawsuit, that he was going to ruin them. Okay, so a lot of people are saying they're behind all of it. They also feel that they say that there's a, another man that's working with Cassie that got her to file the lawsuit. They feel that it could be a member of this liquor company. So many theories going around. So no one thinks this is related to him suing the alcohol company for discrimination, creating a real platform for black business and black uh, PAC. Uh, a lot of people are saying that. I'm too, I'm too tired to think about it right now because I was up till three in the morning going over all yeah. these cases because the new lawsuit is 105 pages and I read it all yesterday. <laughs> 105 pages. So I'm tired. Um, but that goes with what everybody's thinking. They're saying that somebody went after him, the alcohol company, because he's black, if he wasn't, if he was white, they would. So it all started. Uh, Diddy wanted to be in one of their tequila videos, uh, commercials. He said uh, they told him, no, we don't that tequila. We're not marketing for an urban market. Mm -hmm. And Diddy was like, well, why not? We drink. Tequila, too. Right. And they wouldn't do it. They wouldn't put him in the commercial. So he ended up firing him. I, he ended up suing them, pardon me, and then all of this comes out. This is what I think about this whole thing. Like, I do think a company can come out to you, uh -huh. and people say, well, why would they hire you? People can know you got to check it, uh, check it pass. They can know that you are freaking the sheets and all this freakness, right? Mm -hmm. But if they could profit mm -hmm. off you, they will. And a lot of people rather have those kind of people so when things go south, they could turn on them. So, and I think when he headed out with that liquor company, mm -hmm. things did get going. But I think the main thing that got us right where we're at now is P. Diddy don't allegedly, well, not allegedly, but pretty much don't burnt a lot of people. Mace, just not giving them their royalties, using mm -hmm. them up and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He sort of built this world of enemies on his own. Well, it's definitely a battle not a battle, a discussion on social media. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I came across this on uh, Twitter. People were saying, Carisha's different than, uh, what's her name, Cassie. Uh, so they start posting this around, just her, some the way she talks, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, there, I ain't even gonna read it. I'm gonna let y'all read it. Uh, she calls people bees, you a munch. If I wanted to you to eat my pee, like they're calling mm -hmm. her more street. And that's why there's a difference between Carisha and uh, Cassie. And more, and more of a freak, too. I mean, I'm too jaded right now to even think about it. But uh, but that's what's going on. They're saying that, you know, and they're pressing this issue because Diddy's black. That's another argument going on on the Internet. But I, I leave that to Perry. Envy to find that stuff out. I'm back to the lawsuit. Okay, let's get back to the lawsuit. So he's asking to be dismissed. Do you think they will dismiss Lucian, Perry? Um, no. Well, I mean, no, I don't think so. I mean, not on his own. Now he would have to file some kind of like, and Lucian ain't that stupid, right? Now he's coming out saying these things. He had like it's the first lawsuit. The only he know that if he want his name off of it. Sue Lil Rod. That's the fastest way to get off. If Lil Rod ain't got nothing, he'll take you off the thing. You're talking about life. the CEO mm -hmm. of UMG, so Sue Lil Rod. That's that that's good. That's good. Well, I'm, I'm yeah. saying like he yeah. had, like he never heard of a lawsuit. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's a real my reputation. You just saying that because most people want to come out and make a public statement or 
They act like, I don't know why I'm there. I'm just this squeaky clean. You could, he could be. But we don't need to hear it. Tell it to the uh, court. Bonji says, I believe the victims. Why settle with Cassie so fast? I believe the victims too. But I think what's going to happen is there's going to be two, two sides and mm -hmm. everyone's going to stay in the media arguing their point. That's what I think. Right. Now, uh, Solution, that's a funny name. It reminds me of the movie, of the TV show. Uh, what was it called? I forgot. Anyway, uh, so he filed his gang of paperwork today. It just came through. So I got to read that and I will be back with this tomorrow. But basically, he's asking to be dismissed because from the lawsuit because he had no knowledge of any criminal activity. Empire, that's it. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So we got Lucia in there. Uh, also, uh, they're uh, included Cuba. They have gone from mentioning Cuba Gooding Jr. in the lawsuit to actually him being a defendant. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, according to Rod, Rodney, sorry, Rodney, Diddy tried to push him off on Cuba. Now, Cuba has a, a reputation of being a drunk. Sorry, Cuba. You're a fabulous actor <laughs> of being a drunk and uh, touching un inappropriately touching women. And according mm -hmm. to him, you inappropriately touched him, put your hands down there and all of that stuff. So I'm not sure why he went from being mentioned in the lawsuit to being a defendant. Hold on. I got to read these really quick. He was also working as galvanized black money and used that money as leverage during his upcoming political election. Who is he? Are you talking about Lucian? Mm. Oh, oh, wow. I got to find out about Lucian. I told you I'm going to read up on Lucian tonight. The underwater tunnels are just for neighborhood style guys. They serve a purpose. Remember, he is a ex trafficker. You need more than one person for trafficking. This is true. Yeah. Uh, could he be a scapegoat in a ring? He very, very much could be. Taylor. In mm -hmm. fact, that's what they're saying. I didn't want to state it. It's the word on the curb, but I have no evidence. But if I hear this is just people talking, uh, that's a huge possibility. This yeah, it could lot. be. I mean, like Sean was his scapegoat. Oh, yeah. 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 Uh, people are changing their minds. A lot of people are saying he's part of a bigger ring here and He's the scapegoat. He's the fall guy. Um, I don't know. I'm too. I'm just gonna read what I <laughs> tell y'all what I read, and that's it. Um, so yes, people are saying that. Oh, the person that bought uh, the share in Revolt is the uh, he, the owner of Essence Magazine. I know him. I know. Him. Oh, Perry, remember we did a whole video about him. They're saying that that's him. Um, and then others are saying whoever brought it, it's still black owned, but in order to be black owned, I believe it has to be a percentage. It doesn't have to be a hundred percent black owned. So other people are saying it could be a white person. Other people are saying it's somebody that was on the tapes. We don't know for right now. We can guess, but we don't know. And they want to remain anonymous. Okay. So, um, okay. So this flight manifest. Okay. So they're having people, uh, more and more people are refusing to testify, okay? Uh, all these Jane Doe's and stuff are scared of Diddy because they feel that things can happen to them, like they can be lost, like uh, the rapper G. They don't know where he is to the point they had to drop that portion of the lawsuit. Now, I guess, so, and they haven't gotten into the videos yet, so we don't know if there's videos there or not videos there. Now they resort to chase. Uh, to checking his flight manifest. That means there is a record of who all have ever traveled on his private jet. Mm -hmm. What are they going to do with that information, Perry? Well, no, I mean, what it is, like, wherever he chartered that plane out of, his plane going there and stuff, they can go back, check the manifest, right? Mm -hmm. To see the people's names 
And some could be victims. Mm -hmm. Some could just be people around who could have seen something. So when they question a the victim and said, I was on this flight, we went from here to here. They going back tracking where all he went from. Not just they did that. No, they no. did that for Epstein too. Remember, Bill Clinton oh, yeah. was on one of the flights. Oh yeah, right, right. So they going back and they can go and question other people mm -hmm. that was there mm -hmm. to get to find out, you know, like maybe to verify a story. Let's talk about this Daphne Joy situation. I don't have her picture. Uh, Daphne Joy is is. 50 cents baby mama. Uh, they have a child named Sire. Now, <laughs> uh, we all know publicly that 50 really has two children. He does not speak to Marquise till this very day. I mean, I like 50. I don't know. I got to talk to my damn kid. Even if he did me wrong, I got to talk to my kid. But anyway, let's not judge because I don't know what these people go through. And 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 50 Cent came through for me, in my opinion, for Taraji P. Henson when um, Oprah did her wrong. I love 50 and he don't play with Oprah. Uh, anyway, so uh, Daphne was listed in the lawsuit as a possible ex-worker. OK, now let me tell you something. Daphne Joy is Filipino. She is beautiful. She's a the main reason that Diddy hate, that Fifty hates Diddy because after they broke up and they had their son Sire, years later she decides to date Diddy, go on a date, hook up. I don't know the to the extent. And Fifty came undone. OK, because it's true. You don't. Go after my baby mama. Like what you doing? And he has been has his foot on on Diddy's neck ever since. This is the real root of the problem. Uh, he also has been calling Diddy. He knew about Diddy being bisexual for many, many years. Diddy, he was focused on black people using our money for political party for this upcoming presidential election. The same way other cultures do. That's true, too. That's very true. Anyway, so they're saying that Daphne was a possible ex-worker. I don't believe it at all. Her name was just mentioned. She's not. Listen, unlike Marquise, 50 Cent has taken very, very good care of Sire and her. He pays for all their expenses. And they do have, a, at the end of the day, a good relationship co-parenting relationships. So uh, I just think that people are just making a big thing out of it. I don't think she is a sex worker at all because she used to also hang out with somebody else really famous. But anyway, let's move on. Let's talk about the LB Shore Quincy situation. Now, right before we came on, Perry, you said you sent me this? Yeah. Okay. They're saying that Al, that Quincy wrote a letter to his father no, pardon me. I'm all out of here. That Quincy wrote a letter. No, Albie Shore wrote a letter to Quincy mm -hmm. asking him to come back around. Now, I think I'm getting ready to pull this. Hold on. Here it is. Which indicates that Quincy is still Team Diddy. I think he will always be t Team Diddy. He has, unlike the other ones, he has a certain amount of gratitude mm -hmm. for Diddy because Diddy did not have to treat, take him in and raise him as his own. He said he never felt that he treated him any different than his biological children. And we're going to get into that in a minute. Uh, I'll be sure since Quincy Brown amid Diddy criminal investigation, come home. Ugh. Now, remember, you guys, I was telling you that Quincy's suffering from depression. Um, he feels torn because uh, Albie Shore told him that Diddy unalived his mother. And I did a whole video about that. If you missed it, please go back and check it out. So here the article says, Albie Shore has taken to social media to send a message to his biological son, Quincy Brown. The 55-year-old uploaded a photo on Thursday morning, March 28th, urging the 32-year-old to return to his side. 
Letter to my son began the caption, come home. He continued to write, the door is wide open. So that means Quincy ain't talking to him. That's what I'm going to take that as. You're safe here, son. I love you, Pops, your biological father. <sighs> he closed with the medium brown tone raised fist emoji and tagged his health equity in transplantation coalition organization. This is it. And it goes into that uh, Quincy was raised by P. Diddy and didn't even meet Albie Shore until he was well into his 20s. He also wrote an open letter. I believe Quincy was 18 at the time, uh, denouncing Albie Shore as his father. Um, okay, and then they talk about the raid. This is sad. This is sad. I'm going to assume that these that Quincy is still taking this very hard and decided to cut off any type of a relationship with uh, Al B. Shore. Now, here's the thing. Me personally, do I think Al B. Shore lied to him about Diddy having to do with the Kim Porter being unalive? I think it's true. I think it's true. And I know that Quincy loved his mother dearly. I don't know. I think I would try to stay out the media, Al. I understand you feel that your son, you feel he's in danger of being around Diddy. Of course you would feel that way. But he's 32 years old and Quincy's allowed to make his own decisions. Yeah, I mean, I mean he is, but 32 Still his son. Mm. Mm. And, you know, and he looking at it from the outside, what kind of life, what kind of environment he's in. You know. All right. Um, it's ahead. sad. It's sad. Mm -hmm. uh, let's talk about one of the last topics. Let's talk about uh, there's a rumor going around, and it's been going around for years, that P. Diddy is not Justin's biological child. Now, this can easily be proven with the DNA, but you know how the rumors mill is. They're saying that a ma the, his main security guy, who they named Wolf, and I believe his name was Anthony. What was his name, Perry? Do you remember Anthony's last uh, name? Uh, hold on, let me. Okay, according to the rumors, he was, he was security. Oh, I even had his picture. Let me see if I can find it. He was security for uh, P. Diddy for a long time, but they're saying that when they were at some record studio, he was, con uh, Diddy confronted him and there was a big argument and a big fight. And that shortly after, uh, he lost his life in a drive-by. Was now, it Anthony we Jones? Yeah. Anthony Jones is his real name. Let's see if I can pull this his picture up. We can't keep blaming Diddy for unaliving everybody. Perry, do you think he unalived Wolf? <laughs> I'm, not, crazy. I'm not gonna say he unalived nobody because people who talk like that go bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just simply saying that people is rumors that you know a lot of people go missing around Diddy. That's it. I leave it at there, that. There is rumors. There really are. Let me put this picture up. He is no longer with us. And at this point, if it's true, what difference does it make? Diddy has raised this man, this has raised Christian as his own. And why y'all bringing this up now? Y'all messy. Y'all messy. <laughs> y'all messy. Like, why are y'all bringing this up now? Because Justin don't care because he facing jail time. And he's probably very much worried. Here, um, somebody said, dang, Diddy stealing everybody's kids. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Here's the picture. That's the rumor. I don't know if I believe it. I don't care. That's how I feel on this. I don't care. Like, you know, uh, rest in peace. You know, sorry that you uh, lost your life. But did did he do it? I don't know. You know, he got in an argument. All right, let's pull a couple comments and then let's go. 
Please chill down the chat. Okay. Well, I'm about to go. I'm about to go. Quincy's still young at 34. I have three sons and we don't always get along and they don't always like my opinion and get upset. And I don't see them for a while, but they come back eventually and see the view. Yes. I very much understand what you're saying, Tracy. Back up, Al. He's dealing with a lot right now. He's dealing with a lot. Suffering from depression. Just ease up, please. One more and then we're out. Did he probably prefer to have non-biological kids around him to say they could all participate in the parties? You <laughs> <laughs> You're messy. You're messy, Miss Leah. All right, you guys, me and Perry will be back at our scheduled time this afternoon with more hot topics. And then I'll have a little more about the motion that the CEO Lucian Grange filed. All right. Uh, I'll see you guys in a couple hours. Bye, everybody. Until next time. Bye for now.